Sam Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, did the social media stuff. Um, yep, yeah, very, very much appreciated. Um, had a nice thank you from um, Paul at uh, Brave New Spirits. Didn't really say anything <laughs> more than just thanks. Um, I suppose at the end of the day, sort of, all advertising is good advertising as long as you're not saying it's completely crap, but which I don't think I did. Um, another fair appraisal of uh, a series of bottlings, I think. Anyway, um, today's episode of the show is whew, a bit of a special one, it has to be said. Um, I was doing some box rummaging um, the other week and uh, discovered that I'd still got half a dozen samples left over from the 2010 Independent Bottlers Challenge. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd completely and utterly forgotten about those. Um, and um, obviously, uh, I, I checked to see whether they were all okay. I had to discount uh, the one of them because it was pretty pretty dreadful. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't that the fact it hadn't withstood this test of time. It was a dreadful bottling to start off with. I'm not going to say obviously who it was, but. Um, the wonderful thing is that uh, I will probably never ever get the opportunity to do this this tasting ever again. Um, I mean, it harks back to those wonderful days when um, a independent bottling companies would bottle stuff that had a modicum of age. I mean, that the youngest whiskey in today's flight is twenty years old. Um, so a you know that doesn't happen anymore. B even if they did, they wouldn't be just bottled in a plain bottle as the um, oldest bottling in today's episode of the show um, from Berry Brothers was just bottled in a plain tall round bottle um, yet it's 35, year, 35 years old I think um, uh, no 30 years old um, of course nowadays if an independent bottling company bottled something of that kind of age it would be in a lavish wooden case and probably bespoke bottle um, and you would have to fork out comfortably four figures for it uh, even if it was just a sort of a, a Kulila. Um, and thirdly back then independents would quite happily send you a sample of this this sort of stuff you know they wanted to sort of say you know this is the sort of caliber of, uh, of of mature spirit that we're bottling nowadays not hope in hell absolutely not you know it's basically a case of look we're releasing a 30 year old whatever um do you want it don't you want it that's basically about it um so uh the chances of ever doing a, f a flight of six Islas uh, over 20 years old ever again on on the show is practically well million to one shot I'd probably have a more chance of being hit by a bus I imagine than uh, <laughs> than doing another episode of the show like this so it's kind of a bit of bit of fun um, it's also interesting because you know, I've ne not tasted these since 2010 um, apart well obviously the, the McKillop's Choice it wasn't I mean that's just a little bit of an older uh, release um, I think I tasted that first in 2013 so I haven't tasted any of these again since that time I've nosed them all as I was putting them into the glass to make sure that everything was, um, you know, that they, they weren't, weren't sort of, uh, or hadn't succumbed to the ravages of time, shall we say, and they're all in pretty perfect condition, it has to be said, which again is pretty amazing when you think that they've been sat in a, a, a cupboard for, well, the last 13 odd years and, you know, not very much, well, you know, about half the, uh, the sample bottles, uh, shall we say. So, um... So yes, obviously, you pro if you could find these, they'll be available on auction sites. You'll probably have to pay an arm and a leg for them now. Um, but anyway, so this is just a bit of, um, well, sort of just a bit of fun, shall we say. Um, and uh, just because I had them and I could share them with you. So it's really, really quite cool. And um, yeah, so not really a great deal else to say apart from let's have a look at today's lineup. No. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start with the youngest in the lineup, which is 20 years old. I mean, God, I, I, I can't imagine ever having the opportunity to do that again. Um, so, this is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's bottling uh, called Chinese Food in an Old Fashioned Hotel. Uh, bottled at 52%. Uh, it is a Kalila. It was distilled in 1989, bottled in 2010 at 
29 years old um, and the, the code or cast number, um, you know, how their numbering works, 53.141 and a single refill bourbon hogshead. Uh, then we're going to move on to the only sample. It wasn't uh, part of the Independent Bottlers Challenge. It's basically the substitute uh, and I think a pretty damn good substitute at that. It's a 22-year-old Laphroaig uh, bottled by McKillop's Choice. Uh, bourbon cask 11731 bottled at 52.1% distilled in October of 1990 and bottled in March of 2013 now the sad news about McKillop's choice is no no Lorne hasn't died uh, he is retiring or has retired I believe so there will be no more McKillop's choice and I have to say that um, of all the independent bottling companies that I've purchased from I have to say lawn bottlings I would probably I would buy without tasting them um, ish uh, there was only one sample that he ever sent me that I didn't think was was that good uh, one and, and there is no other independent bottling company that I've <laughs> that's anywhere close to that I mean lawn was you know it's just a complete perfectionist I mean you know, he would have no end of samples. He sent me a photograph of his desk and it was pretty much like my study, just bottles everywhere. Um, and if it, he wouldn't bottle it if, it if he didn't think it was good enough. And, you know, I know a lot of independent bottling companies say that, uh, but with Lawn, uh, you fully well believed that. I mean, he didn't bottle an awful lot anyway and what he did tend to bottle was of quite an, a, a good age um, and bloody expensive it has to be said uh, but even so you know you knew you were getting a quality product um, so you know lawn will be missed I think anyway moving on uh, this is uh, the next bottling it's a 25 year old Kalila uh, bottled uh, by Wilson and Morgan in their barrel selection range uh, 46%, a single bourbon cask 3132, distilled in 1984, bottled in 2009. Right, Port Ellen time. <laughs> Don't get the chance to do that very often on the show. I think I've only ever had one other Port Ellen, I think. But anyway, um, and, and, and you know, anyway, so this is uh, a Connoisseur's Choice, Gordon McPhail's Connoisseur's Choice bottling of Port Ellen, 27 years old, bottled at 43%, uh, refill sherry casks, bottled, uh, distilled in 1982, September 1982, and bottled in September of 2009. So there have been some pretty spectacular uh, 82 bottlings of uh, Port Ellen, so hopefully this will be one of them as well. Um, the next bottling is uh, by um, uh, Single Malts Direct in their Whiskies of Scotland range. Uh, it is a 29-year-old Kalila uh, bottled at 55.1%. Single, well, I assume a single bourbon cask, um, bourbon cask anyway. Uh, distilled in 1980 and bottled in 2009. And as I mentioned earlier, the final bottling of the day is a Berry Brothers and Rudd bottling in their Berry's own selection range. This is a 30-year-old Kalila distilled in uh, 1979 and bottled in 2009 uh, at 53.1% single bourbon cask 4412. So really looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting because like I said, this is the last time I tasted this lot together with the exception of the McKillop's Choice was 13 years ago. So it will be interesting um, because obviously, you know, I've had more experience now of tasting whiskey and it's, uh, I, I imagine that some of the whiskies that I tasted back when I first started in the industry, you know, 20 odd years ago, um, I probably would have a different opinion of now, shall we say. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, what I think of these now. So anyway, um, let's kick off with the uh, the baby then, shall we? Don't try this. I'm sorry. Right, so it's got Not Whiskey Society, 20 year old Kalila. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Mm, that's lovely mature. It smells a lot older than 20 as well, it has to be said. Um, it's got that lovely dusty um, sawdusty oak quite a lot of oak actually for a, for a, a Kalila 
that dusty peat, you know, sort of slightly peppery, dusty, spicy, um, a little bit of wood spice, some salinity. Camphor leaf, menthol, um, a little bit of honey. Oh, wow, that is one hell of a nose. That is stunningly good, it has to be said. Um, and underneath all of that, there's a, 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 a fruitiness as well, which again, is one of the, I think, one of the hallmarks of Kalila. It's not a one-trick pony. It's not just all about the peat. There is a lovely fruitiness there to the spirit, and it's kind of like almost subtropical. Uh, a little bit of apricot, pineapple, possibly, almost kind of sort of mangoey, melony sort of notes as well. I mean, it's, you kind of have to work to get to that point. You know, you have to ignore all the other stuff that's going on. Um, but it is just absolutely testament to the quality of the spirit that is produced at Kalila. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. That's what we'll pass on. Wow, what a finish. I mean kicks off quite nice and fresh and grassy, um, slightly citric as well, juicy um, subtropical fruit coming in, apricot, apple, dusty peat, um, a little bit of camphor, a little bit of menthol, um, some wood spices, vanilla, that kind of leafiness is kind of continuing right the way through. That's all almost tobacco-y kind of leaf on the finish it kind of mutates into it, it kind of starts off as a, as a kind of slightly grassy note and then moves into sort of maybe a slightly sort of drier kind of uh, herbally kind of note there's a little bit of honey as well just underneath all of that it is gorgeously complex um really long slightly malty quite full rich um but balanced and just enough sort of saltiness there just enough gentle peat and that's right, medicinal note, no, mentholy note rather than medicinal. Um, just kind of like sort of poking through. I mean, absolutely stunning. What a, what a whiskey to begin with. Right, okay, so on to the 22-year-old Lafroig. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Again, quite a lot of oak for a Lafroig. It's got this chunky vanilla. Um, and it's got this lovely sort of almost kind of shimmering vanilla um, quite fruity as well there's a sort of a slight sort of banana-y note um, a little bit of apricot and ash quite ashy the peat again is quite ashy quite delicate um, a little bit of kiwi almost green gauge I mean that is incredibly fruity again um, and this is just the thing, you know, shows that sort of, you know, how complex um, older islas can be once the peat is just kind of knocked off a bit, you know. Um, it's really subtle, it's really soft, and it's allowing the character of the spirit to shine through wonderfully balanced. A little bit of medicinal note, a little bit of TCP, but it's just, it's just so gorgeously fruity and sweet. Uh, and, and salty and balanced and mm, and like I said quite quite a fair amount of vanilla oak quite a lot of, of, of American oak coming through um, stunning absolutely stunning really very very impressive let's see what the pads are Wow, what a progression. I mean, it kicks off with the sweetness of the oak. Again, quite a lot of vanilla. And that's kind of infused into the sort of like the apricot, a little bit of subtropical fruit, a little bit of banana, a little bit of apricot, pineapple. Um, and then it gets right really herbal on the mid palate. The peat moves in a little bit um, with the herbal sort of um, bog myrtle, um, menthol, camphor, nettles um, and then we, we're sort of moving into a sort of slight sort of almost perfumed 
um, barley and vanilla and, and a decaying rose petal um, but sweet decaying rose petal rather than sort of mulchy decaying rose petal really interesting in actual fact I quite wasn't expecting that almost kind of yeah rose petal violet sort of light um, and like I said decomposing but not sort of mulchy and you know still got that herbal kind of character a little bit of smoke finishes with a suggestion of chocolate possibly I mean really really complex beautifully old the Freud I mean just absolutely stunning <laughs> Right, how many of you kept keeping count, count of the number of times that I say absolutely stunning? Uh, I think I'll probably say an awful lot throughout the, uh, the course of the show. Anyway, let's move on to the Wilson and Morgan Kalila. This is 25 years old. Now, completely different to the um, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's uh, bottling. It has more of that kind of tarry, wet asphalt. Um, old rope, tar, astringent, coastal notes, fish, salt, fishy peat, brine, oh, completely different animal it has to be said, um, which kind of makes me wonder if the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's bot. well I would imagine that the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottling probably spent most of its life on the mainland, this I'm guessing spent most of its life at Kalila. Um, because the, the, the coastal intensity is just so much greater. Um, it's kind of classic Kalila nose, no oak whatsoever. Um, maybe they're not most sort of um, complex, um, but like I said, lots of kind of ashy tar, um, old rope, more tar, fish, brine. I mean, just a sort of beautifully intense um, coastal uh, Kalila. Sort of pass on. Soft, mature, possibly a touch more oak, still slightly tarry. Not as complex, it's kind of I suppose homogenous, but homogenous has that kind of negative connotation. Um, in this case, I would say it's sort of just a little bit simple. Um, certainly de delivers pleasantly. There's a little bit of camphor and menthol just coming through on the finish. It has a nice, uh, a nice spiciness that the alcohol is kind of intensifying that spiciness. Would it have worked if it was at car strength as opposed to 46%? Would that have get, given the impression of maybe more complexity? Possibly not. Um, I, I don't think it was the most complex uh, of, of casks, shall we say, to start off with. Um, although, like I said, the nose was absolutely gorgeous. And this is probably what I guess was... Um, the sort of driving factor with this particular bottle in the nose beautiful really intense and it just didn't quite follow through on the palate unfortunately which is a bit of a shame um and so you know you nosed it and you're really expecting fireworks on the palate and you get a bit of a damp squib to be bluntly honest with you um and um it's it's just the way of these things um you know i have tasted no end of whiskies exactly the same thing and you what you assume is that whoever bottled the cask probably didn't taste it you know certainly if it was a distillery bottling they're probably the master distiller or blender is nosing I mean they just physically cannot taste taste it you know even if you spit um, after about sort of a dozen or so you know your palate has really become hammered by the alcohol um, and being objective is very very difficult whereas obviously nosing is a completely different thing but as we can see you know, there is sometimes a big disconnect between the nose and the palate, and that's certainly what uh, what's happening here. But still, not a bad bottling. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Connoisseur's Choice, Port Ellen, uh, 27 years old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? It's a little reserved. It's a little bit kind of... Um, one could say delicate, um, one could say recalcitrant, um, 
uh, it's kind of it's got that kind of sort of old did you no right okay so let's move on to the 27 year old Port Ellen let's see what the notes gives us on this then shall we quite leafy um, neckly menthol white fruits grass not a huge amount of sherry it's kind of there in the background um, some medicinal peat it has that sort of verve to it I suppose um, it's not the most complex Port Ellen I have ever come across um, is it because it's 43% is it because it's been chill filtered probably um, it's kind of Port Ellen light I think um, it just feels like there's something missing a little bit it's kind of got that kind of classically sort of Port Ellen uh, character but not in any real great intensity um, it's okay it's pleasant I don't know what it would have retail what would that have retailed for back in 2010 um, I mean that would have been comfortably three figures um, it's probably a damn sight more now um, you know, it's probably it's still high three figures I would have thought but some of the concerts choice bottlings and Port Ellen haven't really sort of made the money that the um, uh, that the uh, distillery bottlings have done and I, and again probably more to do with the fact that they were bottled at, at sort of 40 and 43 percent as opposed to anything else um, and it has affected the intensity of the nose. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, it's still a great whiskey, um, just not particularly complex and not particularly intense. Oh, damning, I suppose, really, isn't it? Anyway, let's see what the bow's like. A little bit more oak, softer, vanilla. Again, slightly ashy, delicate. And again, not really that complex, not really that intense. It's a pleasant length. It's pleasant. It's good. It's okay, you know. But you don't really want that from Port Ellen. You want Port Ellen to go, oh my God, that's incredible. And I'm like, I, I can't do it with that. It's all right. It's okay. Um, it does have that sort of, you know, um, trad Port Ellen, not trad Port Ellen, trad sort of colillary kind of white fruit, sort of citrus grass, um, garden garden peas, that kind of thing. Um, uh, but it just, like I say, it just lacks the intensity. It lacks the sort of like the hit, um, and it's all a bit kind of mm, nice, but. Mm. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 29-year-old Kalila. So this is Single Malts Direct Whiskies of Scotland uh, bottling. Let's see what knows who's on this then. Ooh. Now, we're in the kind of Wilson and Morgan end of the spectrum. Again, lovely intensity. Um, creosote, char, maybe a bit more malty, darker, a little bit darker possibly. Um, botanical bog myrtle, dark honey, to no, mm, toffee, no, coffee rather than toffee, um, quite sawdusty, um, a little bit of honey, elegant, gentle, delicate peat, just a whiff of peat, you know, and a whiff of medicinal iodine, quite coastal again, a little bit of, of marzipan coming through. Stunning, stunning nose, beautiful, lovely maturity. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. See what that's like. Now, unlike the Wilson and Morgan bottling the intensity just carries through onto the palate. Uh, again, dark fruit, a little bit more peat, um, creosote, char, lovely freshness as well. That uh, That's pretty much down to the alcohol, just lifting that mid-palate. Um, 
again slightly herbal slightly mentholated um, long continues in a quite dense malty kind of fashion which is quite um, I wouldn't say unusual because um, obviously <laughs> we've had the, the Wilson and Morgan bottling which is very very similar um, but I remember sort of Kalila sort of older Kalila being a lot more delicate um, although you know it again just goes to show how, how different things are not as oily as modern Kalila that's the main thing that I pick up on this it has a sort of uh, that freshness um, whereas modern Kalila has more of a sort of a, an oiliness to it and uh, it's obviously a, a, a tweak to the cut points one would imagine which has happened probably naturally over time rather than by design um, Stunning length though, absolutely stunning. I mean, it's just lingering, a little bit of wood spice right on the aftertaste, but it's just that sort of dense maltiness that is, uh, and that coastal character that, although maybe not quite so coastal on the uh, on, uh, as the nose of the Wilson and Morgan bottling, but certainly in a very, very similar place. But the palette just way, way uh, outshines the Wilson and Morgan palette. <laughs> On to the last bottling of the afternoon. Um, now, 30 year old Kalila, <laughs> you know, I haven't seen a 30 year old Kalila in a long, long time, and I probably haven't tasted a 30 year old Kalila in a long, long time. So, really looking forward to this. Um, okay, it's kind of hinting at sort of like the uh, whiskies of Scotland and Wilson and Morgan nose, um, in that it's got this beautiful coastal character it's not quite so dense it's got it's kind of more classical Kalila from my personal point of view um, fresh white fruits a little bit of coffee a little bit of vanilla but more kind of more salty um, fresh citric a little bit of grass the malt and the malt does come through it comes kind of later on with that sort of more heavier kind of maltier notes a little bit of caramel creme caramel um touch more her the herbal notes are coming through a little bit stronger with time but that's beautiful i mean that is stunning i mean an absolutely stunning whiskey as to be said balanced lovely sort of balance of coastal character of peat of, of oak i mean it's just the sort of whiskey that you know that that like floats my boat, as they say. I mean, you know, doesn't matter that it's thirty years old, but it it's the complexity uh, for me that counts. The complexity, and more importantly, the balance. Um, and I go on about the balance so often, but you know, when when you get a whiskey that is is as beautifully balanced as this, it's just sublime. And you know, then you go on to some other sort of stuff, and you just sort of realise how some whiskies are just too one-dimensional. They're either too oaky or what have you. Um, but this is just absolutely stunning. Mm, so it passes on. Oh, I love that finish. That finish is beautiful. Nettles, pure nettle leaf, um, bog myrtle and herbal spice. But I'm not getting the fireworks again. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of almost reminds me of the Wilson Morgan uh, palette. Um, mellow, pleasant, but just lacking the complexity. The nose was just a, like an absolutely gorgeous thing. But the palette has just not lived up to it. Um, I mean, and, and I'm being ultra, ultra critical, but, you know, that's, that's me, you know, if, if once I, when I have a nose of something like that, and I just think, my God, that's incredible, um, and then on the palate, you're just thinking, oh, hmm, and it, it, it is a disappointment, it has to be said, it's still a fabulous whiskey, but it just doesn't live up to the nose, and, um, it's wonderfonderfully mature it's got a lovely aftertaste like I said the finish was lovely I mean I really like the sort of neckly kind of herbal um, bog myrtle eilery character of the of the aftertaste but everything else up to that was just a bit kind of like you know um, and then after that nose it's just kind of like yeah right okay <laughs> Right, 
Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, well, you know, like I said, uh, this is probably a not-to-be-repeated episode of the show, and, well, I bloody well enjoyed it, <laughs> about you lot, but, I mean, I bloody well did. Um, the um, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Kalila, I mean, that was absolutely gorgeous, it has to be said. Um, uh, lovely combination of sort of oak, um, possibly a little bit more oak, uh, and less of the coastal character because like I said I think that sort of certainly from tasting that and certainly tasting it again some of the other bottlings it said seemed to me that that probably spent a lot more time on the mainland but still a beautiful whiskey um, and like I said a little bit more oak than I would normally expect in a Kalila but you know it's still a lovely whiskey um, the uh, McKellop's Choice of Freud, um stunningly good amazingly good um, and just a beautiful old Lefroy, just showing the quality of the spirit once you sort of, to a certain extent, strip away some of that um, overt peatiness. Um, showing, like Kalila, that there is more to the spirit than just the peat. Um, it's a shame that you have to wait 20 odd years to get to that point to realise that. I mean, obviously, with Kalila, they have released. Um, the unpeated spirit that they they produce occasionally so you do get to sort of see that but obviously with the other distilleries like Lefroy <laughs> you have to have to wait till they release something of considerable age before you get to that and well yeah fork out for it um the uh Wilson and Morgan Kalila well love the nose nose was just beautiful um classic old Kalila lots of Isla character but then the palate kind of really badly let it down. Maybe it had something to do with being bottled at 46%. Maybe it just wasn't a particularly great cast to, to start off with. Um, uh, but yeah, it was pretty disappointing. And to a certain extent, so was the um, the, the Kalila, um, the Kalila, the um, uh, McPhail's uh, Port Ellen. I tasted far more interesting Port Ellen's. Uh, it kind of did what it said on the tin to a certain extent but I, I think the bottling at 43% really really hampered its intensity at the end of the day it was all very pleasant um, and nice uh, but you know wouldn't set your pants on fire so to speak um, the uh, whiskies of Scotland Kalila well I mean that was just absolutely stunning I mean you know everything that the nose kind of promised came through on the palate and that is what you want you know you just you don't want the kind of disappointment of sort of like you know an incredible nose and then a frankly sort of disappointing palate and I have to say that 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 was really the the, the berries Kalila um, frankly a beautiful nose but it's just a disappointing palate again like the Wilson and Morgan bottling um, this time I don't think it was particularly down to um, the, the the ABV I think it was probably more down to the fact that that cask could just got a little bit too old maybe if that had been bottled a few years earlier the palate may well have kind of lived up to the to the nose um, but it's a, a salutary lesson that sort of yes all right a spirit can last for 30 odd years but by the time it gets to 30 is it really complex enough and then is it really worth the price tag and this is why I would never stick an old whiskey on the shelf without ever tasting it because this is here you have the intrinsic issues with old whiskies sometimes they've just got a little bit too old um, and yet the nose is still absolutely fabulous but the palate just doesn't sort of live up to that so anyway I thought this had been a, a really interesting episode of the show. I've really enjoyed doing it, to be honest with you. I hope you guys have, have enjoyed it as well. So um, until uh, next week, um, all that's left to say is never to be repeated again. Good dreaming and good afternoon.